Nope, not that one. I think it's that one. I don't know. Why is it shit not working? Hold on. Damn, something fell. That's not good. No, I wanted to go down. There's no fucking button here. Oh, so that's the up. I want the down. Where's the down? Is this shit not working? Am I pressing the right button? Alright, that's to take the bed up. I want the bed to go down. There it goes. Okay, why is it going up by itself? Alright, so the bed is fucking up. Anyway, um, I, I had to keep my shit elevated. Thank you, everybody. Get well soon. This shit is going to take me about a week to start walking. Um, damn, why is this bed not lowering? What the fuck? Jesus Christ, yo. What's up? Why is it not going all the way down? What the fuck is that? There we go. Ah. Alright, so this video is to show people what the fuck happened to my leg and what happened in surgery. I just got an update today about exactly what they did to my leg to fix it. And um, this, all of that stuff. So as some people may already know, I had like the, ex it's called an external fixation where they put the bars to support the knee from moving they put two like pins in my bone through my leg to support it here and to support it down there so I have wounds there that they took out and then they told me today they made it no I knew about the incisions but they told me what it was for today huge incision incision there and a huge incision there and they said they put plates on both sides of my leg to support the tibia bone that's what you call this the tibia and the bone up here is the fibia fibula so um yeah that's what i'm dealing with my leg is extremely sore they told me that they put like plates and screws damn they told me that they put like um the plates here but there's about 20 screws in my leg, so I'm assuming it's 10 over here and 10 over there. Um, yeah, everybody, once again, please put your fucking blinkers on if you're a driver. Please, you'll kill someone. Please. <laughs> Shit is crazy. My whole life is, like, fucked up and changed, and this guy is still riding around. You know what I found out? I called the police precinct today, and this accident happened on the 18th of May. Do you know that police reports are supposed to be done and completed by the uh, police precinct within three to five business days or three to five days? It's been two and a half weeks and they still, I just called, I finally got the report number, but the lady told me, yo, she couldn't even find it. I'm going to post a phone call. I'm going to post a phone call. Um, she told me she couldn't even find it. Do you know how much shit she thinks she had to do? What's your phone number? What's your name? What was the date? What was this? What was the location? Nothing was popping up. You want to know why? Because the fucking police have me listed as the driver. And I think, well, most likely I know that they did this shit for certain. They're fucking me up. Like, with all the shit that I've been through with them and all the wins that I got and me just being against police so much, they don't want to fucking help me. And if you go to my YouTube videos, I was hit by a fucking 16-wheeler tractor trailer truck, a white man. And they did nothing to that guy. They did nothing. The police tracked him down, put me in the back of their car, followed him, stopped him, all that shit. Nothing happened to that guy. But anyway, um, 
they're not gonna fucking dismiss this shit because my leg is fucked up for my whole life right now. My knee is ultra swollen. And um, yeah, I'm just like trying to expose what they do. Like when they target you, they really target you. And you know, I'm not like a Black Panther or anything like that. So they can't come at me in those type of ways. Like how they came at the Black Panthers. I don't call for that, but I do call for their fuckery. And them listing me as a driver and the report not being completed in two and a half fucking weeks. So that's the police for you. Um, yeah, I just got this thing here because they said since I've been laying down in the bed for so long, my lungs might not be as strong as they need to be. So I put this in my mouth and I have to go up to like 1500. With inhaling to keep my lungs strong because I've been laying down on my fucking back forever. This shit has me immobile. I can't do shit for myself. I'm going to sue the shit out of him and I can actually do it myself. But I'm in a hospital and that's where law, law firms win. So as a lot of people may know, they're called ambulance chasers. They somehow get your phone number and your accident information from the precinct or from the hospital or from the fire department, or from the ambulance, all the four players, and then they call your phone, and then they say they want to take your case, so I said, fuck it, I'm going to let you take my case, but you're not going to take it for more than um, 20%, because they normally charge people a 33.3% retainer fee, or like, when you get your settlement, they take 33%, that's almost 40%, I'm not with it. So I dropped. I said, yo, don't contact me unless y'all are doing 20. I should have went down to 10. But since they're down to 20, um, I said, fuck it. Let me just go ahead. They are going to be doing the work that I can do. So what? And I've already dealt with a car accident before where I had no insurance. I was on an e-bike and I actually contacted the driver's insurance and handled the whole shit myself. This can be done. And I'm going to show people how to do this shit. Because I actually put it up on YouTube. Um, just type in e-bike Liberty Mutual Quiet Boy Music Lawsuit. Something might pop up. I'm not sure because YouTube like doesn't make my searches um, normalized to where like if you type in a few of the words, my videos pop up. It's like hard to find my shit. But um, yeah, so I contacted the driver's insurance and i handled it like a lawyer or a law firm and i actually got them to pay for my entire bike because my my bike was um damaged and um ridden or rode over and for me to use that bike without getting it checked you don't know what's wrong with that shit so y'all are gonna pay for my entire bike it was a back and forth back and forth but what i had to do was create a demand letter something called a demand letter where it states the date, the time, um, what happened, and what you're claiming, your damages. You get that letter notarized. Or you can write it however you want, as long as the information in that shit is clear, concise, and um, like they can understand the information that you're trying to portray. So I did that. And yeah, they sent me a check. Liberty Mutual sent me a check for my my entire bike so i can i'm saying that to say i can do that shit now and actually handle my own lawsuit but it's like i can't walk where am i gonna get paper how am i gonna get to a mailbox (laughs) how am i gonna do all that shit to send them letters and shit like that and oh the precinct look look at what the precinct said oh I i think i said this but they are listing me as the driver and it's not and the report is not even complete yet so do you see what i'm saying like the law firm They're cool, Um, like a Spanish law firm, mostly Spanish people that are talking to me. And they said that with this report number now, they can actually, um, the lawyers can see if there was cameras in the area, which there was, um, NYPD Argus cameras. They're going to see what happened in the area, so it won't be my word against the insurance company's word. They want the facts. So it's been hell trying to get that number for two fucking weeks. Yo, I hate the fucking cops, yo. But it's like this system is set up in a way where you need them. Like the whole system is is rigged to where we need their help regarding all this shit. 
Like, yeah, we could do it on our own, but do I know how to fix my own fucking knee? No. I actually got 730'd. And that means a, a crazy evaluation, a mental evaluation from court when I was already out on bail um, for assaulting a white woman under multiple NYPD cameras at City Hall, Manhattan, in broad daylight. That's what they said. And then they said all the cameras wasn't working that day. See what I'm saying? So that was me being framed. But when I had to go back for second arraignment, uh, meaning like I already bailed out and I had to go back for felony arraignment, um, I said that I wanted to represent myself. And the judge performed something called a searching inquiry. Look at that bullshit. They trying to like instill in me to get over my hurdles. And the nurses have been coming in and saying like, yo, you, you got to stand up. You got to stand up. You can't be here like this long. Like get the fuck out of my face. The doctor said I cannot walk. Anyway, um, searching inquiry. So she asked me, um, so what kind of schooling do you have? What, what job, what work experience do you have? Um, are you good at speaking in public? All the things a lawyer would have to do. Do you know Latin? All these questions I banged out until she asked me this random fucking question. And look at what happened to me now. She said, so, so with me answering all those questions, have you worked before? I said, yes, I had 35 jobs. I worked everywhere. Victoria's Secret, Armani Exchange, BB Express, Payless, Dwayne Reed, Steve Madden, Levi's, LaGuardia Airport, JFK Airport, Five Magazine, pret manger Cozy, um, fucking Rush Arts Gallery. Uh, everywhere, 35 jobs. I got all my, all my pay stubs. This is what, that's what I told her. And then she said, um, can you speak in public? I said, yes, me working at so many jobs all over New York. I've spoken to every type of person, every type of tourist, every type of customer. I'm good with, with relaying, relating to people and understanding needs and, and being, making them comfortable and making the experience more friendly as opposed to trying to sell them. So I, like I said, I banged out all the questions until she asked me, okay, so if you broke your leg, would you go to the hospital? And I knew that was a trick fucking question because she was trying to say, yo, when you have a serious issue, like representing yourself at trial, you need a professional lawyer. So I knew she was trying to do that flip on me. So I said, no, I'd probably fix my own leg. And then she said, with that answer, I'm going to um, deny your request to represent yourself. And she ordered a 730 evaluation. I said, oh, my God, they took like. With that answer, my whole bail was gone and I was remanded and I had no way to get out of jail. And they kept me in jail for fucking four months and 10 days when a 730 evaluation is not supposed to take longer than two weeks tops. Two weeks tops. So they fucked my life up and they, they continue. Like, y'all don't even understand all the things I went through court wise jail wise like i've been in jail so much times i've been to rikers so much fucking times i've been to brooklyn the detention complex so much times i've been to, Man to the manhattan detention complex so much fucking times yo and if y'all watch the um talib kwali and dmx interview which was very painful for me to watch because i understand pain so much and that man like, I, I love that man. I wish I could have met him. I wish I could have just hugged him and, and, like, showed him. There are people that know about unconditional... Man, I don't want to cry. Shit. There are people that know about unconditional love. But anyway, he was talking about um, jail. And, man, if y'all hear him talk about jail, that's exactly what the fuck I dealt with every single time. But God bless me. God bless me. Um, beehive. Beehive. At ATL, that um, interview radio guy with the dreads, he interviewed Choke No Joke. And Choke No Joke was talking about jail, too. And he that video just came out. Y'all should watch that. Um, he was describing what happens in jail, and that shit is real. The same shit he's talking about is what happens in there. And he said, a lot of the times, the toughest dudes in the street are the most pussy in jail. And the softest dudes in the street are the hardest in jail. I don't even understand how much that resonates with me because I always tell I always tell everybody when I was in jail, like, or when I'm out of jail and I'm trying to describe to them what happened with the respect that, like, not respect, like, oh, my kingpin or I fuck people up. Just humble respect. When I'm trying to describe this to people that's outside of jail, I say, yo, I'm the, I have soft hands. I always use lotion. I never did hard work. Um, long eyelashes. I'm a pretty boy, quote unquote. Soft voice, 
But I banged with the hardest niggas in jail every fucking time. Killers. Fucking robbers. The, the person that was dominating the phones because he was blood. And it's a blood phone. Nobody not using that shit. And, like, the biggest dudes that, that like, that protect the house. And, yo, CEOs, give us this. Give us that. Like, both leaders at one particular time was sitting on my fucking bed. The third day that I got into a new house, like, um, a dorm with, like, 60 beds. I'm quiet, but I don't know if it's, I forgot how it happened, but but them speaking to me, whenever they did, they both were sitting on my bed, and it's like, the whole house is looking at it crazy, because one is like a fucking lion, an alligator that fucking kills and takes shit from everybody, the other one is like a gorilla, <laughs> mad strong and shit, but two leaders of the house, and they both are powwowing on my bed, I have so much of those stories, it's crazy. I linked with so not not linked. I didn't stay in contact with them after jail. This is still jail shit. Like you don't want to stay in contact with niggas from jail. Anything can happen. But unless they're true and true, like a good person, you know them for, for sure. But I never stayed in contact with anybody like that. But you know how much dudes I met like that that held me down. That like I'm not gonna let shit happen to you, bro. Like I fuck with you and shit like that. So anyway. So much of that shit happened in jail, and and me being in there for four and a half months, I missed the birth of my third child, like, I missed the first, I missed the second, and then I missed the third, the third one was supposed to be the charm, but I missed the third because they did that dumb shit, and now look, I have a broken leg, so I guess she was right, (laughs) you do go to the hospital to fix your broken leg, but I I was of the opinion, like, bitch, you don't, and sorry to call her bitch, but she was a bitch, Bitch, you don't know if I have a high tolerance for pain. You don't know. You didn't say if the break was bad or minor or major. You didn't. You don't know if I have fucked up credit and another bill would make me like go crazy and fuck up my credit more. You don't know if I studied chemistry and biology and I know that my bones can mend back on their own. But with me saying I probably fix it myself, they 730 me, and I've been through so much shit in jail and now. I have a broken leg and I can't fucking walk. And they say it's going to take about... Let's wave. Hi, everybody. I've just been trying to talk. Get this shit off, off my chest. Um, Now I have a broken leg with fucking long-ass incisions. Long-ass incisions. Thanks, driver. All you had to do was put on your blinker. You would have avoided hurting someone like this. Look at that knee. And look at that knee. See what I'm saying? Like, the shit is completely swollen. Maybe like three times swollen. <sighs> I hate staying in this fucking bed. I hate staying in this fucking bed. This shit is the worst. It feels like jail. It's almost the same thing like jail. You just stay in your shit. You sleep. You don't really do much. You go out for like law library, but it's always back to your cell and like, what well, with me? A lot of people used to be in the day room powwowing, and of course I would do that as well, just to, you know, make my face known, because, like, if you stay in your cell, you're seen as pussy, and you don't want to come out, and people start fucking with you and shit like that, but it wasn't all about that. I really did want to go out and see who the fuck was in the house that I was living with. Um, man, shit is crazy. Four months for this to heal, and then two months of, like... Um, recovery, like, um, I keep forgetting a name, um, when they fix you, when they start to allow you to walk, and they teach you how to walk, and whatever the name of that shit is, that, yeah, I know, that's some bullshit, I know, I know, that's what the courts do, and you wanna know what, that's why I actually recorded everything, like, me being remanded like that, I actually posted that, cause I was recording with my phone in my fucking pocket, that's what I'm saying. Like, people don't understand what I've done yet. And I, I made a beat where I sampled Kanye, and he said, yo, people are not going to recognize all that I've done until I'm gone. They're not. It's like, I'm trying to get the information out. I put it out on YouTube. I have a whole bunch of, like, a slew of important people following me on, on Instagram and Twitter, but it's like, I don't know what it is. They're not reposting. They're not liking. Only some. Well, not enough. Not nearly enough. Um, I do connect with some people via DM. 
Um, I'm actually, I'm so proud of myself for like being a person that can pull energy. Like that's why I got so much jobs in my life. 35, I had 35 jobs before, before the age of 30. And it's because I, I like I know how to seize power. I know how to, to to market myself. I know how to present myself. I know how to be professional. I know how to look in people's eyes and present to them what I'm trying to present to them. I know how to bring about that energy. So it's translating the same way on social media. And I appreciate it so much. Like, damn, Santana, Mr. Santana from the Central Park Five. You know how crazy that is for him to follow me? Um Damn, there's so much people. I can't even, like, it's so much people. If anyone just goes through my followers list, they'd understand, like, how crazy it is. But I'm saying that to say, if I wasn't so private, so quiet the way I am, if I was out and about, do you know how much, like, people I would have or I would have pulled to me? This movement that I'm trying to bring about would have been so much stronger. But I'm going to say this. Women... They can em- enhance a man's kingdom, and I have a woman right now that actually is enhancing my kingdom without me. I gave her all the information, all the knowledge about what was going on in life, a complete 360 in her life. And now she is one of the top women that are providing help for all women in all 51 states where hospitals bow the fuck down to the women giving birth. That's all I'm going to say. So it's going to take a while for the world to understand what I've done so far. And I've had a life like that my whole life. I've done so much phenomenal shit since a child where I couldn't even understand my power. I didn't even understand how I did it. And honestly speaking, like I said in my last hospital video, it's it mimics my life mimics the life of Jesus. Um, I'm on a smaller scale. But all the bullet points match, I swear. Like, if, if I was to show anyone the truth about my life and then match it up to the Jesus story, the Neo story, the John Connor story, the Viva Vendetta story, um, any any against the government type story, that shit matches the same. I'm a fucking superhero. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so happy. That, that my life's work. I'm so happy. It's so troubling though. Like they damage you. They damage you, man. They damage you. They damage you. When when you are confronting them, it's it's so hard. Like they put up all these barriers and all these like damn the system, the matrix, yo. They block you, and everyone turns into Agent Smiths. So um, the more of us that do that shit, the better. Because five fingers separately. You can break them. Together, you can hardly do that shit. It needs a lot of force to break this shit. So I hope everyone understands what that means. Um, Not much people watch my lives. It's all good. I don't care. I have one person in this shit. Who cares? Thank you for still being here. But see what I'm saying? Like, people don't understand what I've done. So whoever has seen this live or whoever has seen this live, do our community a favor and me because I'll, I'll get paid from youtube cents on a dollar type shit but it's not about that do our people a favor and if you ever wanted to find out how to combat the legal system the court system and how to win lawsuits and how to like defend yourself in that type of way watch as many of my videos as you can because i put it all out there for the world to see like y'all don't even understand what i did with internal affairs Y'all don't understand what I did with the CCRB. Y'all don't understand what I did with lawyers. No one really gets it because I'm not seeing the the response from the people. So I know I have like close to 700 videos and it's going to take people forever to actually find that shit and then share it and for it to go viral type shit. If it ever does, who knows? But um, yeah, I hope y'all can do that. Just wanted to update everybody on this shit. And this driver that fucked up my life. <laughs> I'll be alright though. They said I should be able to walk in about a week. I'll go back home. I'll be alright. Thank you for everyone that cares and send me well wishes. I appreciate it. Jermaine, what's up? What's up? What's up?
I'm gonna have to leave this shit. I gotta lay down properly. My back is kinda hurting. I've been laying on my back for like a week. I can't move out this fucking bed. I don't wanna get bed sore, so let me like move around and shit. Thank you everybody for listening.